Good afternoon, students. I have posted a new practice problem to your Canvas account today. It's titled, The Work Energy Theorem, The Go-Kart. Now, before you get started on this assignment, I would like you to do two things. The first thing is to read through all of my notes. So I summarized chapter 10. I wrote some notes and I explained some of the equations in my notes. Read through that. And you also need to complete both sets of weekly questions. Okay? Now, once you've done that, uh, we can go ahead and complete this problem together. But I do want to talk about three things in the notes. The first thing is work. So, work is defined as an applied force through a distance. So, if you apply a force to an object and you move it, you have done work on that object. Now, if you apply a force and you do not move the object, you have done no work to the object because you've not moved any distance. The next thing I want to talk about is energy. So energy describes an object's ability to make a change in itself or to change the environment around it. And more specifically, I want to focus on kinetic energy today because we're going to use kinetic energy to help us solve the problem. Kinetic energy describes the energy of an object based on its motion. Okay, so we're going to use those three concepts today and we're going to connect work and energy by using the work energy theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to read the problem with you and I'm going to underline important information and I will work through the five parts of this problem with you. So, the graph describes a force being applied to a go-kart with a small child in the driver's seat. The total mass being pushed is 116 kilograms and the go-karts initially at rest. So what let's do is let's write down our knowns. It tells us that the total mass, so I'll identify that with M sub T, 116 kilograms, and we're initially at rest. So initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. Now in part A, it wants us to look at the graph, and I've drawn the graph that's on your paper, and identify the force applied at a position of one meter. So in chapter 10, we're going to be drawing a lot of graphs, we're going to be reading information from graphs, and we're going to be describing graphs. So right here, at a position of one meters, so we have a force versus position graph, our independent variable, is our position with units in, of meters and our dependent variable is on the y-axis it is applied force with units of newtons so at a position of one meter we're going to go straight up here parallel to the y-axis we have an applied force of 60 newtons all right part b it wants to know what the position is at a force of 70 newtons. So on our y-axis, let's locate 70 newtons. And you can see that we are at a position of 3.5 meters, okay? On part C, it wants us to describe the graph. Now, when we describe this graph, we want to provide enough information, but we don't want to make it overly technical or overly difficult where it doesn't make any sense. So we want to uh, use simple terms and just some generalities to describe our position and applied force at a particular position. So for example, now just describe the graph here. I'll, I won't write all of this down, but we can say that <clears throat> An applied force is increased in a linear fashion from 0 newtons to 60 newtons through a distance of 1 meter. At a position of 1 meter, a constant force is applied of 60 newtons to a position of 3 meters. 
Then the force is increased from 60 newtons to 80 newtons over the next meter to a final position of 4 meters. So anything to that effect will be fine. You just need to describe really what's going on at the ordered pairs and what's going on between each important ordered pair, okay? On part D, it wants to know what the work is from zero to four meters. So as we apply a force to the go-kart, uh, now remember we're pushing the go-kart and the child, so we're doing work to that system. What we're going to do is calculate the total area under the curve, okay? So the area under the curve is going to represent the total work. Now what we're going to do is split this up into different areas and the sum of the areas under the curve will equal the total work. So right here, that will be area one and this larger area here we'll say is area two and this small triangle is area three, okay? So the sum of the areas is equal to the total work done on the object. Now the sum of the areas is going to equal area one plus area two plus area three. Now area one is a triangle. We know that the equation for a triangle is one half base times height. So we have one half multiplied by our base, which is one meter. And we're gonna multiply by our height, which is 60 Newtons. Okay, so 60 Newtons times one meter is going to be 60 Newton meters. And we, when we talk about work, our units are going to be in joules now. Now remember, last chapter when we learned about torque, torque, the base unit is a newton meter because it's a force times a distance. Now work is an applied force through a distance and we describe that as a joule. So one newton meter is equal to a joule and this is named after James Prescott Joule. So what we have is 60 joules divided by two. So area one is equal to 30 joules plus, let's take a look at area two. So this is a rectangle. So base times height, our base right here, four meters minus one meter. So three meters times a height of 60 Newtons. So we have three meters times 60 Newtons. So 60 Newtons times three meters is going to give us 180 joules. <clears throat> Plus, let's take a look at area three. This is our small triangle here. So this is going to be one half base times height. So one half times our base. So four meters minus three meters. So we have a change of position of one meter. And our height, so we're at 80 newtons now and so 80 newtons minus 60 newtons is 20 newtons okay so we have 20 newtons times 1 meter which is going to be 20 joules divided by 2 so this is going to be 10 joules all right so 30 plus 180 plus 10, that's going to give us 220 joules. All right, so the answer to part D, 220 joules. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at part E. All right, at part, on part E, it wants to know what the final velocity of the car is. Now, in order for us to answer this problem, what we're going to use is called the work energy theorem. So, it tells us that the work applied to an object will equal 
and objects change in kinetic energy. Now remember, as I mentioned earlier, kinetic energy describes the energy an object has based on its motion. So what I want to do is expand the right-hand side of the equal sign right now. So final, well, let's say delta KE. I should have described this better. The capital Greek letter delta represents change in. Capital KE is kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy. This is going to be the final kinetic energy of the object minus the initial kinetic energy of the object. Now, I want to focus on the right hand side still and expand this because kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the object's velocity squared, but this is the final. So I'm going to add a subscript of F to represent the final velocity of the object. And we're going to subtract the initial kinetic energy. So one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared. Now, earlier in the problem, it told us that the initial velocity of the object was zero. So since that value is zero, all of this can go to zero, so we don't even need to worry about it, okay? And we calculated the total work done on our go-kart, 220 joules. So on the left-hand side of the equal sign, I have 220 joules, okay? Now what let's do is let's isolate this variable here. So VF squared, we want to isolate that. I'm going to divide both sides of the equal sign by one half and mass. So what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side, right? So one half will cancel and mass will cancel, okay? So what I want to do is erase here so we have more room, okay? So I'm left with final velocity squared is equal to 220 joules divided by one half times the mass, which is 116 kilograms. Okay? All right. Now, to make things a little bit more straightforward here unit-wise, what I want to do is I want to break down this unit of a joule. Okay? Now remember, a joule is equal to a newton meter. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And we're still multiplying by this meter, which we can say algebraically is meter over one. So in my numerator, I have 220 uh, kilogram meter squared per second squared. And we're going to divide by one half times 116 kilograms, which is going to be 58 kilograms. Okay, so what I want to do now is just talk about the numerical value. So go ahead and get out your calculator. I have 220 divided by 58. This is going to give me 3.793. Now I want to take a look at our units here. So. Whenever we divide fractions, so kilogram in our denominator, we can algebraically write this kilogram over one. So whenever we divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the inverse of the denominator. So I have kilogram meter squared per second squared times one over kilogram. So as you can see, our units of kilograms will cancel, leaving us with units of a meter squared per second squared. Now, you might say to yourself, well, these are some funny units here, meter squared per second squared. It's okay, because we have final velocity squared on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So what we can do here is take the square root of both sides of our equal sign on the left-hand side when we take the square root of final velocity squared, 
Those items are canceled, so final velocity. So let's take the square root of 3.793. This is 1.95. Now, whenever we take the square root of the right-hand side of the equal sign, remember that not only are we taking the square root of the numerical value, we also are taking the square root of the unit value. So when I take the square root of meters squared per second squared, this is going to give me meters per second. So the final velocity of the car, 1.95 meters per second. So if you have any questions over this problem or if you have some questions over the notes that I provided on your Canvas account, please let me know. Send me an email. When you're finished with this, go ahead and attach that to an email, send it to me, and I'll give you some points for it. I hope you have a wonderful day.